God bless you. It's Word Wednesday time. I want to thank everyone for joining, giving everyone time to join in. Hoping this broadcast is reaching you well and in good spirits. Praying that the sound is clear, the video feed is strong. Even though this connection is a little weak, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But giving everyone time to join in. So we thank God. I'm getting the thumbs up that we seems like we may be broadcasting um, within a relative level of excellence to be heard, and that it might that it is being received. So we just thank God for you all joining us. God bless you, First Lady. Is with us tonight. She's right here with us, even though she's not on camera tonight. Thank God for Minister Stacy Dukes joining us. Amen. Praise God for all those that are joining. Go ahead and invite someone to come on in and join that we might spend a quick moment in the word. Nothing to take too much of your time, but plenty to stay on your mind. God bless you. Missionary Marion Williams, Lydia Williams, Chief Missionary Jackie Jackson, I believe might be with them also. I want to thank God for all those that were with us and in attendance today. The home going services of one Ethel M. Choice our Aunt Ethel, our sister, our mother, um, family member, business partner, whomever, and, and wherever she was uh, to you, I believe we sent her off in, in great style and uh, in class like she would want it. God bless you, Mother Terry Little. Good to see you. Amen. Praise God. Missionary Jackie Jackson, tell Trustee Tyrone we need, we need him to, 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 uh, to, to count in the back tonight. Let, let him know that we, we're going to need his help counting in the back. Praise God. Amen. But we thank God for all of you joining us. We want to continue in his word, understanding and grabbing hold of the gravity of the understanding that God is a promise keeper. Somebody need to say amen right there. Uh -huh. And while we're getting at that, uh, it's for a reason. For us to fully understand that if God makes a promise, he is sure to keep it. Amen. I, I'm not getting any amens. I'm not getting no, no, no sure folk up in here on this evening. Come on, somebody. Uh, but I believe uh, that we've got some amens in the house that can say God is a promise keeper. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, 11th verse says it this way. This is a promise that we're continuing to write on the tablets of our heart to understand this. For we know that God is saying to us, he knows the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans of good and not of disaster to give you a future and a hope. I know we've had some inclement weather uh, going on and there's some disasters in certain areas, but I like how that translation uh, gives it to us today that God has a plan for us a plan to prosper us, a plan that is not for disaster, but to give us future and a hope. Amen. You can grab hold of that hope on this evening. You can grab hold to that very understanding that God, I understand and I'm holding you to your promises. Come on, somebody. You need to declare that this evening. God, I am holding you to your promises. God bless you. Trustee Rodney Thompson Amen. Good to see you. Amen. We're holding God to his promises uh, because uh, not so much for us to understand uh, that we feel God might not be a promise keeper, but that our faith is strong enough to know that if he did it before, come on, somebody, he can do it again. Oh, I'm getting excited right there. We need to understand that God's promises are sure. Joshua 21 and 45 says it this way. Not one of all of the Lord's good promises to Israel failed. Every one of them was fulfilled. You've got some things that you've got uh, in prayer right now. You've got some things that maybe you're trying to determine just how uh, it can come to pass. Why don't we trust God tonight and understand and hold God to his word not that he's not a promise keeper, but us holding it uh, in our remembrance, holding it in our heart to understand, God, you know what? Uh, yeah, let me let me use your word right now 
to cause me to understand, realize, and remember that God, you keep your promises. Amen. We understand that God is truly that, a promise keeper. We're moving forward. Palm Sunday is coming up. And just as Christ is going through, and many of us, you may be celebrating the stations of the cross this week and, and in the upcoming weeks and even a holy week coming, uh, we need to understand fully that this time of resurrection Sunday recognition is not just for an Easter suit. It's not just to look well. It's not just, but it's to understand fully that God, you came to this earth with a promise and you fulfill that very promise. God wants us to understand tonight that there's nothing too hard for his promises to overcome. Praise his name. Have you written your vision plan that God has given you yet? Take this time as we're spending time in the word to write the vision plan down. Habakkuk 2 and 2. What is the plan God has for me and my family? What is the vision plan that God has for me? You can break out if you got to have multiple ones. You can have your professional uh, vision plan, personal vision plan, ministry vision plan, whatever it might be. I know if you're like uh, uh, Missionary Marion Williams and Reverend Emmanuel Williams, y'all trying to start Williams Temple before the end of the year. Praise his name. <laughs> Come on, somebody say Williams Temple. That's a, that sounds good. Yeah, say I'm good at I'm good at names and titles. Praise his name. But yeah, no, no, no. You got to write these things down that you might be able to allow the very written word in an undestructible or in a, in, a, in a manner that can't be destroyed easily. No, we're not, we're not writing. Now, I'm, I'm messing with some of my uh, uh, brothers in transition. You know, sometimes you'd have to write on whatever kind of paper you get. And it might be some of that flimsy paper that, you know, you might be using for, for something else other than writing on. Come on, somebody. Come on, where my prison ministry folk at now? Come on, don't, don't, get, don't get big time on me now. Yeah, I'm not talking about that flimsy kind of paper. No, no. You need to write this down somewhere where it's going to last. Put it in your phone. Put it on your desktop uh, or of your laptop or your, de or your computer at home. Make it your background on your phone to understand that I am writing this down, that it might, the very written word will hold me accountable. The vision plan that God has given you. God has given, I, I don't even know where to start. I don't know what God's, but yes, you do. Whatever it is that you're putting your hands to, God's got something tied up in there. Whatever you're doing, whether somebody's paying you or not, there's something in that. You've got to go deeper. Somebody say, go deeper. God, we're asking even tonight to help somebody that is looking to get further clarity and understanding on your vision plan for their life. Cause them to seek you in your word. We're understanding that as we're writing this vision plan down. We're doing that, that the herald might run with it and that it might accomplish exactly what it was set out to do. Habakkuk, the second chapter, second verse says it. Even if it tarries, wait for it. We've been covering this a while. Somebody said, man, I haven't even gotten started yet. That means even if it's taken a while to get started, you can still get started now. See, somebody thought wait for it meant, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to just sit here and wait for it. no. Though it tarries, make every effort to do your part to bring it to pass. God is waiting. He is ready. Doesn't matter where you're putting your hands to now. Doesn't matter what station in life you, you think you're in. God still has a plan. Come on, somebody. Say, God still got a plan for me. Amen. Come, yeah, put your hand on your chest. God's got a plan for me. Yes, he does, Mother Terry. Amen. Yes, he does, Missionary Jackie Jackson. Amen. Missionary Marion Williams. Minister Stacy, God, trusty Rodney Thompson, Sister Nikki, Gabby and Grayson, God still got a plan. He's got a plan for, amen, Sister Lydia, praise God. All of you that are joining, those that are maybe even watching this in its recorded state, God's still got a plan. Elder Wardell Alexander, he's still got a plan. Deacon Noah, he's got a plan, amen, yes he does, amen. As we were even today in service together, 
we were realizing that there are many transitions that God takes us through in life. But the one thing that we can guarantee God is never instructing us to do is to give up, shut down, and do nothing. Come on, somebody. You, oh my goodness, somebody is feeling that right there. Do y'all understand? If Colonel Sanders had thought over 50 was too old to start something new, we may never have even experienced Kentucky Fried Chicken. Warren Buffett didn't even begin to make the kind of money he has now until he was well over 60 years old. We've got to understand. You say, well, who are these people you're talking about? What we're trying to get fully understood is that God has a plan. And with the plan that, that, that you thought was, was what the plan was 20 years ago, God's got a plan right now. Amen. He's got a plan for us right now. As we're reading in his word, we're constantly pulling on these promises. These promises, even that I've read today, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Amen. These promises that, that we're reading are there for a reason, y'all. Joshua 21 and 45. These promises are there for us to fully understand that if you would delight yourself, beloved, in the Lord, he shall give you the desires of your heart. That's a promise from God. He's also promised that he would make your enemies your footstool. Oh, see, yeah, we got to turn. We got to ch change gears right there. Amen. It's so it's real easy uh, to, to stay positive. But, you know, you say, look, preacher, uh, there's some stuff that's been going on where it appears that that there are those that are literally working against me, working against uh, the very plan uh, that, that that I believe God has given. I, I, you know, he, there, there, there are people uh, that are that are working uh, against uh, what what God has. I, I really believe God has commissioned me to do. Well, Psalm 110, first through the fourth verse. I want to read this in your hearing. Psalm 110, verses one through four. It says, "The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand." Until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord has sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. God wants you to do just that. He wants you to sit on his right hand. That's a position of favor. That's a position of trusting God. That's a position of saying, God, I am waiting as your promises come to pass. I am sitting on your right hand and once again, the right hand, sitting on the right hand means that you're put in a position to rule. Tell yourself that I'm put in a position to rule. Yes, I am. Amen. If you look at this, if, as you uh, read this passage, when he gives instruction to sit at the right hand, it isn't a position of leisure. It's not a position of kicking back and waiting for what's next. No, he says, look, sit at my right hand. Until I make your enemies my footstool. And then this is what's going to happen. I'm going to send my rod of strength out of Zion. And send it in the midst of your enemies. And people that uh, are going to come around and work with you. They're not going to be troublesome. They're not going to be a problem. They're going to be ready. They're going to be ready to put it together. Ready to put their hands to work. Ready to be a part of the very plan that God has given you. So take heart in that. That's another promise from God that he's going to make your enemies your footstool. He's going to make any challenge that's coming your way. The very thing that pushes you to where he wants you to be. The very challenges that we're experiencing are to make us big, be better, not bitter. They're to make us bigger, not badder. We're understanding tonight, and even as we're closing, 
We're continuing leading up to our Holy Week services to spend time in his word. To not only write the vision plan that God has given us, to track it daily and understand as you're tracking it and everything doesn't appear to be working out immediately to use that as fuel to dig deep into his promises and fully even understand what's happening. Challenge comes your way this past week. You need to be thanking God. You know what? Thank you, God, because that challenge that came my way worked this other piece out. So now I understand how to move forward in that area. Sitting back in leisure would cause things to be happening and we not be ready for them. We not be equipped with the very tools for the job that God has given us. So we thank God for the challenges that we experienced last week because we declare and we understand tonight that those challenges are the very promises of God coming to pass. Slide on over to the right a little bit, y'all. Sit on the right hand, says the Lord, as I make your enemies your footstool, as I make the very challenges you're facing the catalyst for the blessings of the Lord. Somebody needs to say, amen, I received that on this evening. God, you're making my enemies my footstool. I'm standing on your promises. I'm understanding your word. I'm even recognizing that what, what's taking place. I'm not focusing on people. Oh, that's my enemy. God's gonna make them my footstool. No, I'm understanding on the right hand. Gives you clear vision. Gives you insight. You're read into whatever's going on. Worst thing that ever happens is people making a lot of effort towards something that's not even the enemy. Lord Jesus, uh, it's not even the problem at hand. But when you're on the right hand of the father, you're read into whatever's going on. You're read into whatever challenge is coming your way so you can target and understand where it is the challenge lies. No, no, that person in front of you is not the enemy on the highway. It's construction six miles up that's causing the backup. See, we about to get mad at somebody in front of us. That's not the enemy. On the right hand of the father, you can have clear vision to see further ahead on what's happening. And know and declare that God, I'm hearing from you. Not only hearing the vision you have for me. But also hearing as I'm tracking the progress of this vision to understand where the challenge lies, where the work needs to be done. God's putting us to the root of an issue, not the symptoms. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I'm getting to the root of the matter. It's so much easier when you get to the root. Solving the symptoms might help things for just a little while, but getting to the root gets it solved and it's shaped up right straight way from that point forward. We're closing tonight for somebody that doesn't know Christ tonight. You can come to know him today as savior. You're banging your head against the wall. You're fighting the wrong enemy, not even realizing the battle that you're in. You can ask God to save you tonight by praying this prayer. Father, I know I'm a sinner, save me. I'm confessing with my mouth. I'm believing in my heart that you died for my sins. Save me right now. Even as we get close to resurrection time, what even a greater time to come to know Christ in his fullness. If you are of the household of faith, believe us tonight, grab hold of his promises. Scroll back, roll back through this recording and grab those recordings or grab those scriptures tonight that you might be able to grab hold and use these promises as fuel to move forward. God wants you to continue writing your testimony, to continue sharing with, with others because you have written down his promises. You're reading them daily. Jeremiah 29, 11, Joshua 21, Psalm 110, one through four. The very promises of God are yes. And we say, amen to the glory of God. Somebody say amen tonight to declare that I'm on board with this thing. God, I'm on board with what it is you have me to do.
It is done in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Thank you for all the well wishes as we've been um, experiencing loss in the family and spending time with our with the Choice family. Please keep the Choice family continuous in prayer. Please uh, continue. Uh, we send blessings and God bless you out to even all of our birthday uh, fellowship members uh, that are still celebrating. Praise God for you. Amen. Amen. Minister Stacy, uh, Sister Sarah. God bless you, Sister Sarah. Amen. Uh, and then also uh, 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 Missionary Marion Williams. So we thank God for all of our birthday people. Amen. We thank God for you. Join us this Sunday. Uh, we'll be with our brothers and sisters at University Place. We're looking forward to coming and seeing you all. God bless you. And join us. Come on, somebody say join us. Come on, somebody say in person. You need to start canceling the work of the devil right now. Any doubt, any despair, any disbelief, any, any whatever it is, we're working on the enemy right now and pleading the blood of Jesus against anybody making reasons why they can't come to Easter service on the 17th. I want you to make an effort. Start making plans now. Go ahead and get your outfit out now. Come on here. Somebody say now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Go on and get your outfit out. God bless you, Mother Daisy. Good to see you. Get your outfit out. Get your plans. Who You need somebody to take you to church? Get you somebody to take you to church. But join us on Easter Sunday. The 17th, we'll be together in service. We want to see you out and in service. God bless you. Have a blessed week. We'll see you real soon. Be blessed.